So, um, yeah, thank you very much uh, for having me here uh, for the interview. It's a, a good opportunity to um, introduce myself and my uh, company and my research um, to the public. Um, my name is Rui Fa. Um, um, I'm senior data scientist in um, Elsevier. I have been Elsevier for um, three years and uh, um, I'm based in London. Um, um, basically, um, my area is in the uh, health data analytics in the clinical uh, solutions division in Elsevier. Well, um, as a data scientist, my um, expertise lies in data analytics. Uh, within the healthcare context, my job is to translate the physician's requirements and the questions to um, codes uh, um, understandable um, by the machines to instruct the machines to mine the health um, data in turn to support um, physician to make better decisions and to improve the clinical outcomes. And the key message I would like to deliver through this roundtable are from two perspectives, um, the clinical perspective and the technical perspective. So in my opinion, the clinical perspective is even more important to the technical perspective because um, firstly, when not replacing the physicians, but to support them. Therefore, the models, um, the predictive models need to be understandable and uh, interpretable to the physicians. So secondly, there are so many clinical um, questions to answer. So we need to clearest definition of their um, most interested questions. Within that, uh, with that questions, uh, definition of questions, we are able to implement their requirements into a model flawlessly. So from our experience of um, collaborating a French hospital, it took us um, hours and hours time to communicate with physicians to clarify the definitions of their interested clinical um, questions in the protocol to make sense of their data and their uh, coding system. So, um, and to choose what um, um, variables to be used in the modeling before any modeling could start actually. Um, so I have also made the point in the round table that the nature of electronic health record data, like um, for example, it's secondary use for analytics, um, retrospective data for modeling and uh, prospective data for generalization lead to the difficulties in data analytics. The first difficulty is the um, missingness and uh, irregularly sampled time series data. Um, we can view irregularly sampling is a special case of the missingness problem, which is actually missingness problem in time series data. This type, um, this type of data brings data analytics a huge difficulty. So I, um, I couldn't go deep into technical details here, but uh, uh, our lesson can be summarized to uh, three tips. So the first is um, to learn your data better. And the second is pay enough attention to the pre-processing. And the third is if you are facing irregularly sampled time series data, um, and you have um, also a large population of patients, then you can consider deep learning methods. So there are many deep learning methods designed to deal with the irregularly sampled time series data. So the second difficulty is the uh, benchmarking. Um, as I have emphasized many times in the round table, 
So the purpose of the predictive modeling is not to replace the physicians, but to support them. Therefore, the benchmarking of a model for health is not simply to validate the model outperforming other models or human physicians, but to prove that the model can improve the clinical outcomes by raising physicians' attention and involving um, and them in the uh, intervention. So that is reason why sometime a clinical uh, trial is required to fully test the model's efficacy. So yeah, that, those are points that I would like to deliver uh, on, the right, uh, on the wrong table. Yeah, uh, well, as I have said that we are not replacing the uh, physicians, but help them to make better decisions and improve the clinical outcomes. So um, by doing so, we, uh, I can see uh, AI impacting healthcare in two ways. Firstly, um, AI, <coughs> sorry, AI techniques indeed will improve the clinical practices. Um, as we know, AI is good at recognizing complex patterns, especially in um, high dimensional data. Um, more importantly, uh, AI will hardly be affected by the physical and emotional conditions like tiredness or sadness, um, uh, something like that. Uh, while human uh, physicians could could not avoid, so AI can work for a long time and uh, keep providing consistent uh, performance, um, which will reduce physicians' workload and improve the efficiency and uh, reduce clinical errors. So secondly, AI will um, help us understand healthcare better. So um, interpretable AI can provide us uh, not only the improvement of the outcomes, but also the reason why AI could bring such improvement. So whatever these reasons, I expect it or not, they can, <clears throat> they can um, benefit us um, to understand better the knowledge. If the reason uh, expected or understood, then our knowledge can be validated or reinforced. But if the reason are not expected, then AI can provide us uh, hypothesis to actually um, do more ex experiments to work out what what's the um, reason um, 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 underneath that. Yeah, that's my um, point of view. As uh, because I was um, data science uh, student, so um, I think data science is an applied science, uh, which means that it requires not only technical knowledge or skills, uh, for example, data um, engineering, machine learning, or deep learning techniques, but also um, the domain knowledge. So um, you don't have to be um, as professional as a physician uh, to work in the uh, health data analytics, but you should at least have enough knowledge to understand what physicians are talking about when you are uh, discussing uh, these questions with them. So um, as I mentioned in the round table, the communication with physicians is the key to the success for a health data analytics uh, project. So my advice to um, students is to um, um, settle yourself in a domain. Um, here, the context is the uh, healthcare. So um, then put yourself into the uh, scenario and uh, uh, master both um, technical knowledge and domain knowledge and practice more to improve the skills, um, yeah. Okay. So uh, Elsevier is one of the largest 
uh, publishing business in the uh, health, life, um, physical, and the social science field. So um, particularly, we provide a quarter of world um, clinical and health content, including some top journals like the Lancet and the, the Cell. Um, in the meantime, we become a global leading provider in um, informatic and uh, analytic solutions and uh, have built a research and information ecosystem to help science, technology, and uh, health prof um, professionals um, make better decisions, deliver better care, and uh, make ground creating a uh, groundbreaking discoveries in their fields. Um, our products and the services, including um, Science Direct, Scopus, Pathway Studio, uh, Clinical uh, clinical Key, Clinical Pass, or um, et cetera, to cover mainly three areas, um, um, life science, clinical analytics, and the general research relationships which are rooted in our uh, science and technology content. So um, it is worth noting that uh, my health analytic team in Elsevier uh, Clinical Solution Division is growing quickly. And uh, we collaborate with hospitals to provide our um, professional data analytics to help them improve their clinical outcomes. And we involve in the projects to um, building clinical guidelines for specific country and uh, population. Uh, we also provide substance reports from data in cancer clinics to help um, pharmaceutical companies understand their uh, products positions in the market better. So yeah, that's um, that's. Um, uh, what we are doing um, to um, using AI to improve um, health analytic in the uh, real world. Yeah.